Welcome back, everybody, with Energy and Work, AP Physics C. We are doing work part two. All right, so let's get into this. All right, example number 13. It requires six joules of work to push a two kilogram object from point A to B on a frictionless ramp. Frictionless ramp. What is the length of the ramp? Okay, so we're looking for what this distance is here. And there's a few ways we can do this. We're going to assume we're pushing this up with constant velocity. And when it doesn't state something like that, you're going to just assume that. It even happens in the AP exam sometimes. Uh, we're also going to assume we're pushing this up the hill like this. So there's, a two, there's two ways I want to show you guys how we can do this. So the force applied is going to be the same thing as the force of gravity in the x direction or this direction right here. So if this is 2 kilograms, that means the force of gravity is going to be 20 times sine of 30, which is going to be 10 newtons. So which means force applied is also 10 newtons. So we can do the work done by the force applied is going to be equal to 10 times the distance, which we're looking for, times cosine of theta. And what we know is uh, cosine, it's going to be pushed, getting pushed in the same direction it's moving. So it's in the same direction it's moving. So that's going to be 0. We know that the work applied uh, is going to be doing 6 joules of work. So that way we can find what the distance is. We're just going to do 6 divided by 10. And we see the answer is 0 0.6 meters. Okay. Another way we could have done this is we should know that the work done by something is equal to the change in energy. And if it's getting pushed up with constant velocity, that means the kinetic energy doesn't change. But what this means is the gravitational potential energy change. So 6 joules of energy is equal to the mass times gravity times height. So 6 is equal to m, which is 2 gravity, which is 10, and h, which is unknown. So we can figure out what h is. We could do 6 divided by 20, and we get equal to 0.3 meters. So now we know this height is equal to 0 0.3. And now that we know that, we can figure out what this distance is using this angle here. So we can say sine of 30 is equal to opposite, 0 0.3, divided by hypotenuse, which is d. And we can see that d is equal to 0 0.6 meters. Okay. I wanted to show those two ways because there's so many ways to do work problems many times. I want to show the different formulas you can use. All right. Uh, okay. Moving on. A 700 kilogram crate is on a rough surface inclined at 30 degrees. A force uh, equal to 5,600 newtons applied horizontally to the crate. As the force pushes the crate a distance of 3 meters up the incline, the speed changes from 1.4 meters per second to 2.5 meters per second. How much work does gravity do on the crate? Okay, so this is interesting. There's a lot of information here, but all it's asking for is the work done by gravity. So personally, the only thing I'm going to be really focused on is the force of gravity. Okay, so I know this force of gravity, uh, if that's 700 kilograms, this is going to be 7,000 newtons. Another thing is this is moving 3 meters here. Um, and I can figure that out. Now I know the angle between the distance and displacement is going to be this right here. And how I'm going to figure that out is I know this angle here is 90. So this is going to be 90. And then this angle here is going to be 30. So this whole angle from here to here is going to be 120 degrees. Okay, I hope that made sense. Watch it again if that didn't. But now, now I know everything. Work of gravity is equal to force of gravity times distance times cosine of theta. Work of gravity is force of gravity, which is 7,000, times the distance, which is 3, times cosine. Uh, it's going to be 120 degrees from where the force is. So this is going to be equal to 7,000 times 3 times cosine of 120. So it's going to be negative 10,500 joules. And it should be negative because as it's going up, it's making it lose energy. Without gravity, it would be able to go up this ramp easier and faster. So it's get, it's making it lose energy. So then we have a negative 10,500 joules. Okay. Okay. Uh, conceptual question eight. In the following diagram, we have two different scenarios. In the first scenario, a person lifts a box up to put it on the truck. In the second scenario, a person slides a box on a frictionless surface. In which scenario does the person do less work? Okay. So this is a little bit interesting. When you think about this, if you were to think about this a little bit, you see that this one here requires more force. 
This one over here requires less force because we're just pushing it up an incline. However, this one here requires a smaller distance. This, this distance is a lot smaller. While this one here is going a larger distance. So we see that one has a larger force and one has a smaller distance. One has a smaller force and one has a larger distance. And what this shows us is actually both are going to be doing the same amount of work. They kind of make up for each other or compensate and you do the same amount of work. And this is what happens many times. Many times when you decrease the force of being able to do something, it'll increase the amount of distance you have to do that. That's how pulleys work. That's how these inclines work and things like that. It helps you because you don't have to put out much, as much force, but usually you have to go a larger amount of distance. Okay, uh, Some engineering knowledge there. All right, moving on. You do 174 joules of work while pulling your sister back on a swing that has a chain which is 5.1 meters long. If you pull your sister back until the chain makes an angle of 32 degrees with the vertical, what is the mass of your sister? Okay, so we're going to make your sister a box. So this is your sister, she is a box. We're looking for what this mass is. Uh, this is 5.1 meters. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull our sister back. Uh, so this is her. And she makes an angle of 32 degrees with the vertical. Um, okay, so what we should know is she was here and she got moved over here. Okay, so how are we going to figure this out? Well, one thing that we're going to do right now is we know that this length is 5.1 meters. Uh, the next thing that we should know is we should be able to figure out, okay, what is this height right here? Okay, so I'm going to use cosine to figure that out. So cosine of 32 is equal to opposite, oh no, not opposite, adjacent, which I'm going to call the height, h divided by hypotenuse, which is 5.1. And now we can figure out what the h is. Cosine of 32 times 5.1 is equal to 4. Point, I'm going to call that 4.33. So what this means is this height changes. It was originally 5.1 meters, but now it's 4.33. And if we make this the zero line, we can see that this decreases by 5.1 minus 4.33, which means this is 0 0.77 meters. So this starts 0 0.77 meters off from the zero line. Now we can see, we can know that work is equal to change in energy. And that change in energy is that gravitational potential energy. We know the work done is 174 joules. We know the change in energy is the gravitational potential energy. So that's mass times gravity 10 times the height. It changes 0.77. And now we can figure out what mass is equal to. 174 divided by 10 divided by 0.77. We see that your sister is around 22.6 kilograms. Boom. Okay. All right, let's look at this next example. A five kilogram block slides four meters across the floor before coming to rest. What is the coefficient of friction between the floor and the box if the box had an initial speed of three meters per second? Okay, so I guess let's kind of just draw out what the free body diagram is. So we have Force of gravity, force normal, uh, force of friction, and there's a, I guess, and then it's going to be moving four meters, right? So there's a few ways we could have done this. We could use this with, we could figure out what the coefficient of friction is just using Newton's laws and kinematics, but we're going to use energy to figure this out. So what we should know is the work total is equal to the change in kinetic energy. What we should also know is since this is moving to the right, force normal and force of gravity are 90 degrees from the distance, meaning they're both going to do zero amount of work. So the only thing that's doing work is the force of friction. So what I can say is the force of friction times the distance 4 times cosine, uh, and that's going to be 180 because force of friction is going the opposite direction of the way it's traveling, so it's going to be 180 is equal to the chain of kinetic energy, one half m v final squared, which is zero squared, because the final velocity is zero, comes to rest, right? Yeah, it comes to rest. Uh, minus one half m 
the initial squared, which is 3 squared. So this all becomes 0. And now we can figure out what the force of friction is. First, I'm going to find the change in kinetic energy. 3 squared times 5 times 0.5. That's a negative. Uh, divided by 4. And then we get the force of friction is equal to 5.625 newtons. And then I know that this is equal to the normal force, which is 5 times 10, 50, divided by the coefficient of friction, which is mu. And now I can find mu. 5.625 divided by 50, and we get 0 0.11 uh, meter, uh, mu, the coefficient of friction. Okay? All right, let's look at this. Uh, this one might be a little bit more difficult. You slam on the brakes of your car and skid a certain distance. If you had been going twice as fast before you slammed on the brakes, what distance would your car have skid? Four times further, two times further, a quarter, uh, no, a square root of two times further, half as far. Well, you can't go be going faster and expect to go uh, less far. So that's not going to be it. So let's try to figure this out. So at the beginning, you have a certain amount of speed. You slam on the brakes, and then you're going to be slowing down. So we should know this. Um, the work total is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And with this car, this car is going to have, you know, force of gravity, force normal, and then a force of friction as it's slamming on the brakes. So this work total is the same as the force of friction, uh, work of friction. So force of friction times displacement times cosine. And this is going to be equal to uh, change in kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. We should know it comes to a stop. So this is just going to be 0. And then we have force of friction times the distance times cosine. And remember, it's when you slam on the brakes, the force is going to be in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to call this negative 1 is equal to negative 1 half m, which we don't know v initial squared. So we want to know how when when v changes, how does displacement change? So if we increase this by a factor of 2, we notice that this side changes by a factor of 4 because this is squared. So if we want to change this side by a factor of 4, that means the distance over here has to change by a factor of 4 as well. So it's going to go far 4 times farther. I know students have a harder time with that, so look back at it if, uh, if that didn't seem to make sense to you. But again, you want to look at the uh, variables that are important. And in this case, uh, you want to look at the speed, the velocity, and then the distance. So you want to see how, once, how the speed changes and how that affects the distance. All right, guys, so that's everything from this video. Thanks for watching, and next time we are going to be talking about power.